At UEL, we have two primary tools for online learning, Moodle and Microsoft Teams. But which one should we use and for what? Moodle has been around for a long time. It's a well-established and dedicated online learning platform. It's open source, which means it's free to use and not run for profit. Microsoft Teams is a relatively new business management platform, which many are now adopting for online learning as well to take advantage of its collaboration tools. Being part of the Microsoft empire, it has plenty of promotional machinery behind it, and it's sometimes hard to see through the marketing and the hype to the things that we actually need to know. So in this video, we'll be talking about what each of these platforms are really good at and how we can get the best out of both of them. Moodle is a platform that excels in providing resources and activities. Its real strength is in providing sequential learning where students have to progress through tasks and resources in a specific order. It excels as well in asynchronous learning, learning in which students undertake tasks and activities on their own and in their own time. Moodle organises online activities in a linear fashion, where tasks and activities are viewed in a largely sequential order. Courses have topic areas inside of which students can progress systematically through content and activities. The advantage of this for students is that it becomes very easy to work through course materials in an organised manner. In the same way that you might go through a checklist, you can see exactly what you need to do, what you have done and what you have left to do. Tools like completion tracking provide a visual representation of this, helping students to manage their own progress through a course at a glance and make sure they're keeping up to date. Whether students are studying during the day, at night, in the bath or at the park, Moodle provides a structure to their learning journey, a map if you like, of how to get successfully from the beginning to the end. The kinds of activities that work best on Moodle are things to read, ebooks from the library, online articles or lecture notes, things to watch, PowerPoint presentations, embedded videos or links to online videos, quizzes using Moodle's powerful quizzing tools, writing activities, the Moodle assignment tools and Turnitin integrations provide the best platforms for written assignments and feedback. A sequence of tasks. Say, for example, you need students to complete a number of activities before they progress to the next topic. Interactive presentations. Using the H5P plugin or SCORM packages, you can design and create presentations with hotspots, quizzes, branching and all sorts of interactivities. Teams, by contrast, is designed to work best continuously. As a business tool, it doesn't assume there is a beginning or an end, but that the business itself is ongoing, with people moving in and out of a continuous process. And Teams really excels in synchronous learning learning where students interact together or are brought together. Teams revolves around its chat and discussion feeds, inside which students and teachers can communicate with each other through messaging and video calls. With Teams, students can maintain a constant stream of communication with each other and their tutors from wherever they are and at the same time. Users can collaborate on live documents inside Teams, again in real time, without all that tedious mucking about with email attachments, which is great for group work and for engaging students in discussions around texts or other stimuli. The kinds of activities that work best on Teams are things to discuss, 
Discussions can be organised into different teams or different channels inside teams, and those discussions can be either written or through video. Things to produce together. Presentations, Word documents or spreadsheets can be produced by multiple people at the same time. Video presentations, group or individual presentations from students or lecture presentations from tutors. Group work, getting students into groups in a channel provides them a perfect platform for collaborating together on any project. Patchwork assessments, any assessment activity where the aim is to have a continual loop of students producing work, receiving feedback and folding that feedback into their ongoing work. Peer support activities. Students can provide feedback on each other's work both on the documents themselves and in the chat. To sum up then, Moodle works best for online learning activities that are sequential and asynchronous. Teams works best for online learning activities that are continuous and synchronous. Or let's think about it another way. In UEL's online blended learning course, we talk about a learning design framework in which learning activities can be categorised as acquisition, discussion, practice, production, and inquiry. Now we can sort these different types of learning activity into the online platforms that best support them. So for example, acquisition activities are best suited to Moodle, where students can read, watch or listen to content like lectures at any time and without the need for synchronous interactions. Discussion activities though are much better suited to Teams, where the chat functions and the video meetings are designed to facilitate online discussions and seminars. Enquiry activities can be done in either Moodle or Teams, but the capacity for Moodle to integrate with core text ebooks and library resources and activities like glossaries makes it perhaps a slightly better pick for these kinds of research and investigation activities. Practice activities, again, can be done in either Moodle or Teams, but the fluent and easy communication tools in Teams perhaps makes it best for the kind of formative and developmental feedback that can really help students get the most from them. Finally, production activities. And here, neither platform has any real advantage over the other. For many courses, production activities will be related to summative assessment, and what kind of activity that assessment is will determine which platform to use for it. So, Moodle and Teams. It's not a case of choosing between them, but allowing them to work together, each to their own strengths, to provide the best online learning experience for students.